Hello, welcome back to Big Mood, where the moods are big and the dicks are bigger. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the tits are bigger. No, well, not they're really. not. They're not. Well, That's only a lie. these two girls. Oh, yeah, these two hey. got it going on. <laughs> so, we have a guest today. This is Jess Lazama, if you Hi. were unaware. She's one of my favorite people in the whole wide world. I'm oh so God, happy. I love her. Do you I know love you. She loves her. I love yes. you. I love you. I totally love you. Love She's the hottest. <laughs> Like almost forty year old person yep. I've ever seen in my entire life. I, she's so. not ever. She's not even close. She can't even be close. She literally mm-hmm. looks younger than me. She's and I'm twenty five forever. <laughs> Asian don't raisin. Yeah, that's true. Can you believe she has a twenty three year, twenty two year old, twenty two year old, about to be twenty three year old daughter? Yes. When she she's like sisters. Sisters. when she's twenty two herself, I'm twenty three. Yeah, <laughs> she has a twenty two year old. At twenty three, four. Yeah. We need so. to insert a photo of Jess with her daughter because they literally look like sisters. I will. They do. I'll they give do. you one. Yeah. You're you like, one. who's the mom? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Try <know>. finding out. <laughs> yeah, you have to watch this episode if you're listening because you just have to look at this beautiful face. She's so gorgeous, you guys. I love you. You literally so make J Lo look like trash. Yeah, J Lo ain't shit. <laughs> Can I can I come back every day? Yes. <laughs> so sweet. You yeah. raise our hot factor. <laughs> it's a challenge. I challenge you to not be attracted to this woman yeah, by the end of this it. episode. Just try it. So true. Um. So we were coming up with like you know a lot of things that we talk about on the show is things that we talk about in our our chat our like um our group chat mm-hmm. on the on the telephone <laughs> <laughs> on the, tele- on the device telephone that device. has text messages on the cellular device <laughs> <laughs> and uh one of the topics that came up are just like the different masks that you we wear especially everyone being in the public eye um how there's like you know certain things that you're scared to show um and then you show like maybe a little bit and then you're like oh no i gotta put the mask back on or whatever and then like different roles that you play throughout life and how interesting that is um, I also think mm, on a kind of tangent related uh, topic, the different different people that I'm around bring a different yes. part of my personality yeah. out of me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I while we were talking about that, I was like, I thought of Jess immediately because we had just been talking about this um, a few months ago, like pre covid. Uh, we were hanging out. It was like. February ish, a lot of shit was going down yeah. on her personal journey, which maybe we'll we'll get into in a little bit. But uh, I do remember you you talking about it was kind of like a, a breaking point in your life where you're like, I've always been this person and scared to show these other parts of me because I don't want them to be judged too harshly. And I was like, no, like that's all so relatable. Mm-hmm. And I actually felt closer to you when you share like little parts of that um so just f- for context and i feel like i'm talking talking around things <laughs> yeah yeah um g- tell us a little bit about like your your journey yeah my journey a wow it's a long one um 39 and i've lived 15 lives yes. right? yeah like Jeez, don't you yeah. feel you like really have since yeah. high school we've lived so many lives um for me vulnerability is so scary and i think i was just telling nikki that i think that uh, for me, masks are moods, and goddamn, are we human? Mm-hmm. Like, holy shit! I uh, also think that forward facing, we put on the masks that we think people want to see right. mm-hmm. every yeah. day, and for the most part, that means happy, bubbly, positive, and by default, that is my profession. I am a um, coach, and so it is my job to hold the space for people. You should see her abs. And uh, if you think fitness. this is pretty, <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> check out that body. This. <laughs> and I forget I have to hold the space for myself. And that was a big point of contention in my marriage. And um, I'm a public figure, and that's so weird to say. Yeah. I'm a public figure. <laughs> it is, I'm a, just a professional oversharer. And so I shared my marriage, and I share my being a mom and wife life and mom life with my audience. And a lot of times people think I just have the sunshine shooting out of my ass 24-7. <laughs> and that's so unrealistic. Like, I'm human. A lot of days, really it's girl. so easy yeah. to draw the blinds and so do you feel that. like because you think that people see you as that like as yeah. this sunshine figure that you have to uphold this standard for sure constantly totally i think people don't they see one side of you and they just box you in and that's what you are to mm-hmm. them mm-hmm. and they don't realize that you're human you have emotions um i am a mom but i'm also 
just a girl. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm just trying to figure my shit out. I'm a girlfriend. I'm a daughter. I'm all of these things. And I've lived so much of my life on the public eye that they've seen me be married to a man. They've seen me divorce. They've seen now I have a hot ass girlfriend. Yeah. And um, they don't realize like so many people's uh, thoughts get pushed on to you. And it's really hard not to like mask your feelings <laughs> um, when you start to believe what people say about you. So you really have to like stand strong and just really not give a fuck but that's hard yeah i think a lot of people don't realize that like because you may follow each person for different reasons like maybe someone follows you because they're like oh i relate to the mom side of you yeah. um someone follows you because they want to be in the fitness side of you and you don't realize that like just because you're following them for one thing there are so many voices that that person hears that all, like t tons of different opinions. Everyone's got an opinion about you. Everyone, and you're just mm -hmm. soaking this in constantly, and it, yeah. it kind of like um, it kind of like changes how you view yourself, and you kind of get more scared to share certain things because you're like, oh no, that that received a negative response over here, but then it received a positive response over here, and it, yeah. it's it's very it's a mind fuck. It is, and I feel like that's why we have to be like so solid in who we are. But when you're young, you don't even know what that means. Yeah, like exactly. I'm 39, and I barely know what that means to like stand in my body and to know who I am, and to it doesn't matter what people say. Like you are who you are, and you just own it. And through authenticity, I just feel like you just you can share your truth, and people relate to that so much more than they do the mask of trying to pretend like everything's okay. Yeah, I actually, uh, I think Mark Manson, we love him. He, yeah. I think he posted something on Instagram today that said, um, people try to hide their pain, but it's actually one of the most relatable things yeah. um, is pain. So like, why are we all trying to hide it so it's much? so true. <laughs> well, I can yeah. tell you why. Because on the other side, once it is revealed, people judge you and criticize you for that pain that you're mm. going through. Because in the end, everyone's just quick to point fingers as to who it is to blame rather than getting people's experiences or like hearing the pain and like learning from like it or feeling, empathizing or just feeling with, for with it. it. Yeah, because yeah, I actually relate to you a lot. But the opposite, in instead of me coming out like a ray of sunshine, I'm actually like the complete opposite. <laughs> um, but but then like I and I ended up feeling a lot of a lot of struggle with having to to deal with that constant criticism and also being so young cuz i'm i'm 30 i'm about to be 31 this year but throughout this whole time that i have been in the public space about 7 years ish like i've been growing myself trying to get to know myself and things that i've said 5 years ago still come back to haunt me because it's like well you said this like what do you mean like you don't believe this anymore and it's like well i grew like I, yeah, i'm like changing. you're 25 years old at that yeah. point mm -hmm. yeah exactly people love to call people hypocrites as if growth and change aren't something that happens for everybody exactly like uh, i feel like um i feel like that's part of it though is that you feel this need to put on this image this mask because you're so scared of people seeing you know, the real you yeah stabbing at it when really what they're doing is like oh how dare you take off your mask i would never take exactly. off exactly that's exactly they, what's you, happening they're going through the same shit like all the time. <laughs> they're making the same mistakes yes. these people are are falling on their faces all the time but they love to point at you exactly. when you fall on your face so and so it makes everybody you know get all get all caged in and like yeah. oh i gotta put on this thing when uh when yeah you're right and mark manson is right we're Pain is the pain is the only constant. Mm -hmm. um, if, in fact, if you look at like any movie, like anything in entertainment, it's all written about pain. Comedy yep. is written about pain. It's mm -hmm. just we laugh at it because yeah. the character's pain is stupid. <laughs> but like country songs, they're not laughing at it. <laughs> country songs, uh, dramas, like everything is written about pain because it's it is like the most relatable thing. So it's so interesting how that's stigmatized, where like mm -hmm. we can't talk about it. And then there's people that are like, well there are worse pains in the world. So how dare you have this pain when mm -hmm. this, and then, then pain becomes a competition yeah. instead of just like, hey, can't we all just relate that we, that we all have it? We yeah. have to honor our happiness and we have to honor our pain. And I think especially in the fitness industry, pain is almost looked at as weakness. Mm -hmm. As humans, we Absolutely. go, you're in pain. You, mental health to me is so major. Like I would like to lead in with mental health than what it is to like have a great body. You know what yeah. I mean? Mental health is so important and it's a conversation people just don't have. Well, and That's so interesting that that, that stigma exists in the health and fitness industry because that's literally how you grow bigger muscles yeah. is like you like break just, it down you break, break down, it down your old muscles to build it up then they have to heal yeah and you have to give them nourishment yeah. and then they and a lot get of bigger rest. and better yeah and yeah. a lot of rest mm -hmm. and a lot of self-care yeah. yeah there's yeah. a lot of metaphors going on there. <laughs> we have to 
baby ourselves, you know? Yeah. I think that's why babies cry, because they're just misunderstood. No one understands <laughs> what they're saying. I yeah. want you to understand me. Just need food. That's why I cry. <laughs> and Nikki cries so just every day. Uh-huh. It's true. <laughs> and if you cry, I'll cry for, yeah. for you. I don't um, have tear ducts. I don't cry ever. <laughs> she never cries. Did you run out of tears? Because I had a period of time where I was like, I think I just ran out of tears. Like, I don't know. Like, oh, it's wow. Just, like, Tip, that's, that's really sad. Really sad. Like, that is so <laughs> that's sad. sad. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's better than mine. I, I feel like you, I'm a robot. I saw you cry yesterday, so I know you're good now. You saw me get teared up. My yeah, eyes yeah. got watery. I There's some water in there, though. You cried. You oh, I cried. <laughs> I cried now. Like I, I regained the tears somehow. Mm-hmm. But there was a period of time where I'm like, there's nothing left. Like I don't know what else. I can't give any more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> single mama stuff. Because yes. I feel like for me, one of the masks is one of the many hats that I wear is that I was a single mom and I was a teen mom and I never allowed myself the space to feel my feelings because I had this little human looking up yeah. to me for survival and I couldn't lean on her to have like a mental break right. or to feel sad or heartbroken or depressed. I had to like fucking crush the day and literally wake up and make my bed so I didn't crawl back in it. Yeah. And um, You had to be the, yeah. the tough strong one. I had to be the constantly. tough strong one. And so now I'm like please make a tear. So <laughs> I just watch really sad Disney movies <laughs> to cry. What's up Bambi? Um, <laughs> You're like I'm not crying about cry. me. Yeah. I'm crying about Bambi. I'm crying <laughs> for you. But I could cry for any one of you. I just can't cry for myself. Aww. It's ultra mm. sad. <laughs> I, I I get that though because of like just your like how you were raised and like being you were tough for your siblings and then you were then you had uh Corinne, your daughter, yeah. um, who you were a tough parent for and you didn't have like you were a single mother so you didn't have like someone to balance it out with like where you could go to a corner and they watched your right. watch yeah. your daughter for a hide in bit. the closet and have a brownie or a twinkie you know i needed <laughs> yeah. a moment yeah and i didn't have a moment you don't get a moment no. when i do now though i'm living my best life now yeah you are <laughs> dude i think your story is so inspiring i've Aww. said this so much too because i just Thank like you. i fucking love this woman like mm-hmm. this is <laughs> she's, my, <laughs> she's my woman <laughs> unicorn yeah we're <laughs> hyper brain <laughs> what excuse me what just happened we finish each other that's so cute we just start switching over here <laughs> i love it people <laughs> don't know what we're talking about you guys kind of look like twins too so <laughs> yeah, i'm like you do a little bit i'm like we're both papa how much coffee did i drink this morning <laughs> I'm like, my eyes are starting to cross. Double and vision. I'm like, yeah. Sometimes we're speaking a language. Shit. And people we're, are like, we don't know what that people is. People don't know what we're saying. And we're like, oh, we thought everyone knew what we yeah. were saying. Are you the same now? type of Hapa? <laughs> Kind of, kind of yeah. Um, she's Guamanian. Oh, okay. What's Chamorro? Chamorro, Irish. yeah. And then I'm half Filipino and French Russian. So it's kind of like, like yeah. Islander, like Island? mm-hmm. Islander yeah. mixed yeah. with some sort of white. Islander yes. and white. Yes. There you go. Hapa That's why you guys look similar. Hapa Howley. <laughs> and her daughter. <laughs> yeah, we're triplets. Yeah. We're all we're related. <laughs> I love that. No, but, but yeah. you're talking about being a single mom and all that. And like, it does give me flashbacks because like, it feels like that was a whole nother life that I lived. Whole nother life. Because now, you know, I've been with Casey for eight years. So it's been a good chunk of Isaac's life Absolutely. that I have had someone to help yeah. and not necessarily be in the single mom mode. But because even in the uh, previous relationships, I felt like I was a single mom because it wasn't like they were completely checked out of being a parent Mm. um but yeah like i remember so many times of like feeling like oh my god i need a break that's why for my birthday this past birthday i just i i had to have a vacation alone i'm like i need to get away it's like the only time you've ever (laughs) been alone ever in my Mm -hmm. whole life that's so crazy to me yeah i bet that felt really good it was so it was the perfect thing i needed and um but yeah i i I do remember that too and I also remember my mom because my mom was also a teen mom she had me when she was 18 17 and then so but the thing is with my mom she did use me as a crutch like she did lean heavily on me to the point where I was like this is traumatic like I I knew way too much about my mom and like her her problems and like her intimate relationships and like things that I don't think any kid should know and I learned from my mom to not do that with my kid but then sometimes I catch myself like because I don't I also don't want to keep him in a bubble and not know anything and not learn anything coddle and and be coddled exactly so it's really hard to find that balance of like okay I need to not coddle him and keep him in a bubble but I also don't want to lean so heavily on him where like now like he feels trauma from learning about my stuff or whatever so how did you handle that with Corinne like 
That's hard. When you were saying that, I'm like, I wanted to ask you if you ever felt like the mom guilt is another mask. You know what yes, I mean? Because we uh, we have to feel like everything's okay. We have to hold it together for the family. Yep. We're the president of everything. We're the president of the kids. Oh, We're yeah. president yeah. of the morning routine, the president of the food, the grocery shopping and the laundry. And like, we also look good and we also feel good and we just hold it together. And yeah. like, do you skincare and makeup? Skin, and yeah, our arms beauty. are so strong. Yeah, and on top of that, world. Yeah. Yeah. hot as yeah. fuck. Yeah. <laughs> We're the center of the fucking universe. <laughs> and the universe is heavy. Yeah. So like, I, did you feel guilty taking a vacation for yourself? Oh fuck yeah! yeah. Casey Ugh. had to. Why? Casey had to convince me to book those tickets yeah. because I was like, no, like I can't. Like there's just no way. Like we're about to get a house too at, during that time. I was like, in Bora Bora, that's insane. Like maybe if I go to Hawaii or Florida, <laughs> like somewhere nearby, like Caribbean, like I'm cool with that too. I just wanted a beach and that's it. And Casey's like, no, you you should do this. You have to do this. Like Bora Bora's been your dream destination like for years like you have to make it out there so thanks to him I, I did end up finally doing it but as I was there though I felt the mom guilt too like still like I, I was I felt so guilty that like we would FaceTime all the time too because yeah. they were actually it made things worse too because they were camping in like freezing weather <laughs> and you're like tanning and bronzing yeah. yeah and I was like oh no I feel so bad yeah and then they were just like, like I feel horrible. so bad I feel so <laughs> Bad, but them. so good. <laughs> Honestly, I did have to like give myself that, yeah. that space that you're talking about. Permission. I did have to exactly. I had to give myself that permission to enjoy that vacation because there were so many moments where I'm like, oh, what are they doing? Like, are they okay? Like, maybe if they had this, whatever. I'm thinking of like how to help them and during this miserable camping cold trip, and I, I just had to tell myself, like, no, put the phone away. Like, just. Yeah, your mom hat came back on. It was like, do they have sandwiches? Do yeah, they have all the, yeah. the camping materials the that they need? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's no toilet paper because we're in COVID. Yeah, so. they, yeah true. Yeah, well, luckily free COVID. <laughs> luckily you went because yeah. imagine now you'd be and like I kicking would not yourself. Be able to go. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. yeah. Do you ever like when Corinne was younger? Because Isaac's twelve. I so. still feel that, and she's twenty two. The mom guilt doesn't go away. Checking in if she's breathing still doesn't fucking go away. And I find myself like there's such a fine line between being her mom and being best friend you know mm. what I mean because we grew up together I was yeah. 16 I was 15 when I was pregnant with her and wow. 16 when I had her and so we grew up together and it's like being raised by your sister mm. who's also telling you that you have to pay the rent and make your bed mm. you know what I mean and so for she and I there's a lot of headbutting going around and like there's so much it there's a thin line I have to sometimes like and it's hard because yes. also the people I've dated it's hard for them to step into a role when yeah. you don't know exactly what role they need to take. Yeah, so you dude. just end up being mom and dad. Yeah. And best friend oh and God, caretaker. Yeah, you guys are very similar. Preach. <laughs> yeah. And then you don't give yourself permission to take a break and we negotiate out of everything. Mm -hmm. I, I negotiated like out of taking time for myself, even though doing that would have made me a so much more sane human. So we just cope and try to be as balanced and like as uh, sane as we can. But mm -hmm. fuck, that's hard. Fuck that's yeah. so hard. I love tequila. <laughs> Same, but I don't even. I have dogs, so I, I have dog mom guilt now because I don't have baby guilt. That's, That's where true. I, where's mom? Like, I feel like the closest I can relate is just being like, if we're out, I'm like, oh, the cats, the cats. need me. <laughs> but that's like not, yeah. not Joe even. and Franklin. Yeah. Oh, they need me so Aww. badly. I need to shape their future because they're <laughs> little babies. Just thinking about you. Dude, no, I can't so even many, imagine. So many more questions I want to ask you. Like so many things I want to like. Do it. I'm an open book. Ask away. Uh, She's here. I'm sure like the yeah. audience is probably thinking the same thing as yeah. you. Well, the first thing that's on my mind though is... What how, deodorant do you use? Yeah. Oh, how do you smell I'm not even so kidding. darn good? I'm not even joking. I have a custom scent by Native. I created how my own custom scent. scent. That's they didn't amazing. Tell me. Yeah, we kidding. didn't know about this custom scent. I fell in love with them at. Uh, they had me at Coconut Vanilla, and I sh I gave yeah. you a Coconut Vanilla, mm -hmm. and um, and then I found out on my birthday they give you a coupon code and you can make your own scent. And so I like built this in this scent that I loved, and it's a little flirty, a little musky, a little sexy, and it's me. And then they put your name on it. So cool. it says Jess's deodorant. I didn't know they, I didn't, I they did that. I didn't even know that, and they're our sponsor for yeah. this episode. <laughs> My favorite, actually, the regular one, the sea salt and cedar. It smells so good. I think this yeah, one's good for men. It smells like a man. Lavender well. rose here. Um, but did you guys know that aluminum forms a plug mm. in your sweat glands Ew. to keep you from sweating? Every Yuck. time, every time plug that, thing. it's like <laughs> the word plug is so disgusting <laughs> to me. And thinking about aluminum plugging, <laughs> just like a bunch of plugging them. Plugging inside like, of my armpits just makes me cringe. 
Um, anyway, that's why Native never uses ingredients like aluminum, paraben, sulfates, or talc. Um, and they have over 10 scents, including ro rotating seasonal scents. So there's something for everyone. They're most popular and uh, are like the classic coconut and vanilla, lavender and rose, cucumber and mint, citrus and herbal. Um, and it's also risk-free to try. Every product comes with free shipping within the U.S. and you get 30-day returns and exchanges. Um, so do what I did and make the switch to Native today by going to nativedeo.com slash bigmood or use promo code bigmood at checkout and get 20% off your first order. That is nativedeo.com slash bigmood or use promo code bigmood at checkout for 20% off your first order order yeah. and after you put that deodorant on you're probably going to want to exercise or maybe work out or like you know put achieve that deodorant your fitness to work. goals yeah. exactly <laughs> you can't just sit around on your sofa all day so uh noom is our second sponsor and um i personally love this app because it doesn't just focus specifically on weight loss you know a lot of fitness um apps they just like focus on weight loss or muscle building or whatever this is also focuses on the psychological aspect of like why you form specific habits yeah. and how a lot of those things that you're trying to do, like lose weight or whatever, and it, like you need to understand the habits behind. Yeah, it's exactly what Jess was mentioning to yeah. too. Mental you toughness. Yeah, yeah, you can't just put a band aid over it. You have to like actually go in and and seal the wound, solder all that, solder that <laughs> wound. So, um, I one thing that I did before that before I did Noom and I didn't realize I was doing this was um, anxiety eating or stress eating. I didn't even realize I was just reaching for snacks and like stuffing my face every time I felt like I was having a panic attack. So. <laughs> realizing that and like consciously stopping that and forming other habits in place of that so instead of reaching for food i like meditate now uh is a lot of what noom is about and like really distinguishing what the what your specific psychological habits are there's ease and convenience noom works with your lifestyle how you eat um you can eat what you want in moderation because you just learn to control those those habits and um it takes you through uh personalized courses so your habits may be different than my habits and it'll find that for you and help you. Noom doesn't tell you what to do and what not to do. It teaches you how to look inside your own mind and make better decisions for yourself. And Noom has one of the biggest and most accurate food databases available and lets you track meal habits, visualize portion sizes, and see calorie density at a glance. You don't have to change it all in one day. Small steps make big progress. Sign up for your trial today at Noom, N-O-O-M dot com slash big mood. What do you have to lose? Visit Noom dot com slash big mood to start your trial today that's n-o-o-m dot com slash big mood yeah ooh, ooh. Yay. so what are the questions okay jess i i want to know your insight your experience your advice um because you were in a relationship you were married mm -hmm. and this man was not corinne's father no and so you had to find a balance or f understand a role there with their relationship, right? Because I, I seem to struggle a lot when it comes to Casey. And then also for Casey, like, fuck, man, being a stepdad is like the hardest role ever. That's like, hard. holy shit. Like, so for him, he, he sees Isaac as his son, right? But he doesn't get to have the exact same um what is it title title or, or like like, like um, responsibilities or or not responsibilities stature. um execution of like how to parent the same as if for his biological dad so there are certain there is like this unspoken red tape around that role and he struggles with that a lot and and uh, i think in our in our household it gets kind of difficult when for me in my role i see i see my son right He's in this position where he now, he's getting parented by Casey. Casey's doing the best he can, but there's some moments where I feel like Casey and I's style clashes, parenting style or discipline style clashes. And so then I feel like in that moment, I'm like, fuck, what do I do? Do I be a good wife and stand by Casey? Or do, do I try to be a good mom and like step in and like see what I can do for my son to help him feel like he's supported and all that stuff because I, I just struggle with that role yeah I still struggle with it because um there's I didn't I never wanted like my momming to be undermined you know what I mean like don't undermine my authority to teach Corinne how to do things and not to do things and there's also a fine line with like me parenting her and me coddling her a difference between coddling and protecting mm -hmm. 
So like protecting her from the things that could harm her, but like not coddling her so that she can make her own mistakes. And I yeah. found that, I mean, this is, this doesn't help your situation, but with Joe, who's my ex-husband, he really didn't step into that role until mm -hmm. after our divorce. Like oh, he's a great father figure to her now. She actually just started calling him dad oh. instead of Joe, which she did throughout our marriage. And, and how, my, how old was she when you guys got together? She was 12. Okay. Yeah, and I was with him for 10 years. And um, they have a great relationship now. We're great friends, he and I. And uh, But it was always hard for him because I wanted him to do this thing where he would tell her the things that he needed. She actually respected him, I feel like, a little bit more than she respected what I would tell her. <laughs> um, but he just never knew what to say to her without stepping on my toes yeah. and not crossing a boundary with her where one day I think the biggest thing they don't want to hear, their biggest fear is to hear, like, you're not my real dad. Yes. Yeah. And that would crush me. Fuck yeah. And you don't want that for him. So it's yeah. like, how do you stand by him and be a right. supportive wife and let him step into his role naturally without having Isaac build up resentment exactly. towards that's, you that's for letting him struggle. be mean to you? Yes. I mean, be mean to him. Yeah. And that was a struggle for me. And I, the I only thing I could say is that it's a, such a huge conversation where you're like, if you see me parent, if you see me um, telling him what he can or can't do, if there's something that you think, that's a conversation to have after yeah. you've had that with him. Yeah. Because I think what he and I would do is we would have that conversation in front of her and then she's just like, fuck it, I don't need to listen to either one of you because you don't know what's going on. Yeah. Um, and we didn't. Parents usually don't. <laughs> we're yes. figuring it out too. Figure it out. Cats Kids don't come with handbooks. That's the thing you don't realize yeah. until you're older. Where you're, we're like, I, I'm at the age where I relate more to parents than I do to kids. Like, because right. when you're growing up, you relate <laughs> to the kids side. You're like, parents are mean and they're yeah. dumb and like they they're just old. they try to control control you all the time. And then now, like being closer to that age, and my friends are all like parents. I'm like, oh shit, like. It's really hard. And like, you're figuring it out like as you go. Like there's no manual. Like you, they just send you home with a baby with and... a whole ass human. Yeah. yeah. They just make it's sure that scary. the car seat's in place. In charge of that life. That's it. That's all they care that's about. It. is a car seat. They're like, is the car seat in place? Because that's our only responsibility. Once you leave this lot, it is on you to keep it alive. And yeah. you're just like, it's I don't know. A lot of know. pressure too, so because scary. like the, the kids, you know that they see you like a god. Like they they like you are everything to yeah. them, and you're supposed to have all the answers, and yes. you're supposed to be perfect, and you know Gosh. that. But then you're just like messing it all up and you're like feeling guilty about then, it. But yeah, especially being young too, because then you're growing and you're trying to learn shit for yourself. Yeah. And then you have to like guide another person too. So I'm like, holy fuck. Expectations are so major because those expectations are placed on us through like my parents placed expectations on me. They kicked me out. But the society puts expectation expectations on you. I was the youngest mom always in all of her grades and so other parents would look down oh on yeah because yeah. you know they'd be like this young mom doesn't too. know what she's doing and so I was always extra cautious to have extra everything's in line and she always had her diaper bag and she was a good girl and I would just have to look at her she knew yeah. the look yeah same, look, like, girl, same. I'll put you in a headlock right now <laughs> I don't even care who's looking that's um, why I like such a good kid because I'm like don't you I pinched that in her thigh I was a pincher I was a pincher can't do that my now. mom was a pincher too I was a pincher I'd just pinch little turn <laughs> and she would get it right but um yeah that's I'd that's give hard him the one two three i'm like don't let me get to three because then we're gonna go to the bathroom and then <laughs> that's you don't want to go to the bathroom the chunk lot comes out in the the <laughs> and cinto. It's true. My, my dad never even had to use he didn't ever touch us but he would take his belt out and oh. it would like he look snap like it? scary yeah, he'd yeah, snap, snap the belt oh. and i would be like ah I the sound too. Just yeah. the sound the immediately sound. that works. I'm like, cool. <laughs> like, More I than never, anything, I never fell out of line because of that. <laughs> it's just hearing them say, "I'm not mad at you. I'm disappointed." Oh God! Yeah. I oh hate God! Them. I'm almost happier. My my dad was actually just mad. He would just yell <laughs> <laughs> because the disappointment right? hurts it's so killer. much more. Oh <laughs> yeah, damn. But yeah, I don't know because I back to the whole question I was giving you or asking you it's because um like I see that right I see moments where I'm like okay I need to step back let him figure out his role and and just see, let that pan out but then there's like this like mama bear that comes out in me where it's like I gotta protect my cub yeah like, why you're going are you yelling at him you're going too far yeah you're making <laughs> so you like, cry <laughs> yeah I know, so I hear you. That's it's still hard. That yeah, was a very when fine Steve line. tries to be like, Franklin, don't do that. I'm like, hey, I'm the mom. <laughs> hey, don't yell at <laughs> him. So I totally get it. <laughs> Dude, it's just it's rough, man. That's why I, I admire you so much. I'm like, oh, that's well, amazing. You. you know, you've you've your whole story too. And then the fact that like I guess we can move on from that back at you. experience. <laughs> I keep holding it all close, I'm all back at you. <laughs> what I've admi admired about both of you is from an outsider's perspective, I'm like, wow, they like handle shit so well. Like to me, you guys are doing it perfectly. I'm like, mm. I'm scared I won't be able to 
to uphold that standard. But I love the balance. Like when you talk about the balance between being mom and best friend, Mm -hmm. I feel like watching you with Isaac, um, you are really good at being open and having open conversations with him um, and letting him know like why you feel certain ways about about things rather than telling him just don't do this thing yeah. like being open and telling him why and why you yeah I feel like that's really healthy and but then you also have boundaries where mm-hmm. you're not like going too far into like your own personal life yeah. and I think that's so great of you and I also just th- that, that pu- going back to that public thing like you guys are going through all this and in the public eye. <laughs> and I... <laughs> Jeez. How... Um, and, and especially with you recently, like you, when you're talking about your ex, Joe, I know Joe. I, yeah. I've known both of you for she was at a my very wedding. long she was time. She my wedding. I, I knew yeah. you guys when you got together. That's Aww. right. And uh, yeah, so I've seen your whole journey and it's been like, you guys were both trying very hard in that and like you loved each other. I felt the love there, you know, and then but the public only sees like the the good moments. Right. And and all, and I mean, most of the friends also see all, all the good moments. So I think when you got divorced recently, it was a surprise to a lot of people. Yeah. And that's so hard to have yeah. to like feel like you're going through it, but also you need to explain yourself True. now or like feel that you need to explain or yourself or, yeah. or justify to all these people that didn't get to see the behind the scenes. What was that like? Cause I can't like, I, I can't imagine like going through that and then having to have that expectation on you. I had to really think about how I was going to tell our audience that we're not together because a big part of our relationship was so forward facing and but we only allow people to see as much as we want them to see right Mm -hmm. and so social media isn't real and Mm -hmm. it's the highlight reel of everyone's life so of course it was the wedding it was the honeymoon it was all the good things we weren't pulling out a camera and a phone every time we fucking yelled at each other and by the way I'm a yeller and he was very calm I would be the one my head spinning fucking pea soup is just spewing (laughs) out of my mouth and he's just like yes and he's just like when is the storm gonna pass and I'm like oh baby you've married fire and (laughs) so I feel like oh and by the way before just for those of you out there who were like that's fake then that you only show the the happy moments. Good. It's not fake. How it's not fake. weird would it be if she pulled out a camera during the like yeah, yelling? That's even it's like not socially acceptable to show the negative parts. It's only yeah. socially acceptable to show the positive parts. It but is. then now you're left with, well, this is only half my story. Now right. I got to tell you all this other shit. That yeah. Like, why is that your business? Why is right. any of it? But, right. yeah, it's there's there's so much that we have on our plate to share, and then things we take off of it, and. I do try to keep some things for myself, but it's really hard because I also don't want to pretend that I'm living a life that I'm not or have it look like it's something that Mm -hmm. it's not or it is something that it's not. And um, and then, you know, you know, you've been you've been my friend for 10 years. So Nikki knows all of my I've been in loving relationships with men and in loving relationships with women. And so when I started dating Lacey, who's also coach. You weren't surprised. (laughs) By the way, everyone else was. They were like, when did this happen? And I'm like, but these are also little details that you don't have to share with the world. Right. And that's just, you're letting them in. Again, representation is everything to me. So I really wanted to represent what it's like being a true bisexual. I've been married to men and very in love with women. And I'm in love with a woman now. And they're just... I felt like you were you know? dealing with two stigmas at once, two which I was them. like, girl. Like, so one was the divorce. Like, mm-hmm. some people are very just anti divorce. And, like, if you said forever, then you meant forever. And now you're going back on yeah. your word. So, like, a lot of people that are going through divorce, they feel alone, like, very, very alone because they feel like it's not okay to, to share. So, there's that huge stigma. You feel like and a failure, then, probably. Right. Yeah. yeah. All of those emotions. And then, like, them casting judgment on you for right. stuff that you're going through, not your not their business but then on the like on on top of that you um found love with someone very special who happened to be a woman and it was the first time a lot of people were hearing that you were bisexual which is totally like your choice whether to share or not but you know i feel like it it's like it should be celebrated it should be like a really happy moment for you and read and instead it's like now it's got all this like stigma you have to explain a bunch of stuff and i just felt like I'm so I was so happy when you made posts about it because you didn't have to. But there's so many people out there who can relate mm-hmm. and who are struggling. And I think that 
bisexuality alone gets such a Bad there's rap. so many different <laughs> notions of like people have so many different judgments and stigmas that mm. I feel like are so unnecessary um and you had to kind of like navigate through that do, can, do you want to talk about a little a bit of how, sure. like what that was like absolutely I think first to touch on like change like the the storyline so divorce doesn't have to be ugly and so many people want for divorces to be ugly because that's what is in their mind we ended very amicably we're we're great friends he moved he actually moved back home and we sat down and talked and he will forever be i will always hold a tender spot in my heart for joe mm -hmm. we just he's gonna make a great husband to someone else we just weren't the right fit and i mm -hmm. think there's so much integrity in staying in something that's working and there's a lot of integrity in saying to the person that you love this isn't working yeah. and i want you to be happy this isn't making us happy. So before we hate each other and we never speak again, let's break even now. And mm -hmm. there's also no, everybody was like, oh, but your character and you have to have time. Like there's no integrity for me personally in lying to someone for the for the sake of keeping a promise. Mm -hmm. I promised I would be married to you forever, but there's no integrity in me hurting you, not wanting to be with you because we drive each other crazy. Yeah. And by the way, marriage doesn't fix anything. It just <laughs> amplifies bigger fucking problems. It really does. True. Um, and then when I started dating Lacey, I was like, I want to, it was Pride Month, and I really wanted to like represent what it's like being a woman in, I can say middle-aged because I'm almost 40, a year away from it. Oh my gosh. You, <laughs> you're making all the middle-aged women cry though because like you look... <laughs> fucking 25 I live so your good. truth baby i think it keeps you young I'm forever like, huh, can i steal whatever right? vampire blood but, you've been drinking <laughs> like, damn. Damn. virgin blood <laughs> um but i think that there was something to be said about being a woman who's been married who is a mom who is dating a woman and who's in love and just knowing that you can find love and you can live your truth and you don't gotta give a fuck about what anybody thinks because at the end of the day they don't have to live your life and they don't mm -hmm. have to it's one foot in front of the other every day mm -hmm. for me, and I'm just trying to do that as honestly and as authentically as I can. And if that offends someone, just don't look. There's nothing you could do about just it. Look away. Yeah. Yeah. Close your eyes. It's not your business. What do you think? Like some of the biggest misconceptions are about like kind of everything you've gone through, or like what's the feedback that you're getting that you kind of just wish you could be like, no, it's not this or that. Per specifically for marriage, it was everyone was like, you should stay in the marriage no matter what. We really tried. We went to therapy. We gave it our all. We were in it for 10 years. I would so much rather prefer we do it this way than to stick it out another 10. And yeah. now we're in our 50s mm -hmm. trying to start a whole new life again. Yeah. And in terms of bisexuality, I feel like people always think, well, you have the choice to go back. And for me, we just talked about this. It's not about going back to any particular gender it's moving forward with the person that you have like you just see, see with. and love people like, i just see and love people you fall in love with the person there's no like oh well i was straight and now i'm gay right. and now i'm going and back I'm to go straight back. Yeah, yeah no it's no. just you're you're in love no matter what like my personal sexuality is is fluid and i fall in love with people and their you know sexy bits are just a plus and i think they're all beautiful um but i love who i love and i just think that if we can just accept each other for just loving who we love, then a lot of people won't have to wear a mask pretending that there's something that they're not. Yes. You know? I love exactly. that. Just love who you love. Love who you love. <laughs> love is love. Love is love, baby. It really is. You how know. about your, your journey into understanding that that's who you are? Like, how was that, like, discovery? I was 12 years old when I kissed my oh, first girl. Oh, wow. Yeah, Aww. so I've known for a very long time, and my parents know. You kissed um, a girl and you did like I it. I did, I kissed a girl and I did <laughs> I like did it. it. We didn't have cherry chapstick back in eighth grade. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, and that's that's another thing, like I feel like um, when you say to someone you're bisexual, they think, oh, it's a phase. Mm. You're just there, you're touring. You're touring right, like, like the college girl thing too. Right. Like, oh, you're in your 20s, you're just trying to play around. Right, it's and like serious. that. that's what like, gets that's what gets us in trouble my girlfriend has never been with a man ever so she is considered and by the way i never knew any of this was a thing but she's a gold star lesbian and i'm like what does that mean i am i a blue star am i, am I a silver is, star am i a titanium yeah. like what You're am the i red star she's very never experimented yeah. with men so she's yes. never touched a dick basically she's never been with a man okay. and mar meanwhile i've been married to two of them yeah and so i'm sure that was very scary for her to get into because mm -hmm. we've had very open conversations about what that looks like like in terms of me being like we're not jealous people. I'm an Aries, so <laughs> what does that luck with that? Just meaning like we're flirtatious, but we're also uh, territorial. We have an astrology like, episode yeah. coming later. Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah. I'm gonna you learn know? later. Yes, learn. Yes, she knows. She's all a the fire astrology. sign. She's fiery. Fire, fire, fire. <laughs> and 
for her, it was like, are you, I have to be worried about men coming at you and women coming at you. True. Yeah, I think that's the misconception. It's not that there's like, it's not like you're more likely to get tempted because you're attracted to both genders. It's like, no, you're like, if you're in love with a person, you're in love with a person. It doesn't, it would be no different if you were straight or or gold star lesbian. Right. It's like you're with that person, not you're with that gender. You right. know, and like, oh, well, I'm, I miss men now. Yeah, no. <laughs> Wait, I have a question. <laughs> yeah. Um, so then when it comes to like sex, sexual play, not necessarily love anymore, like, would it be for you personally? Is it like a closed door? Like, we're not inviting anyone else into the bedroom? Because it seems to be like a lot, of, especially guys, they think like, oh, she's bi. That means I get to bring a girl into the bedroom. Like, what's the case with you? Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> um, if she, if Joe or Lacey ever asked me to bring in another person, I'd be like, I'm a one woman kind of show. Like, and also, by the way, when you're with me, you don't need any other person because I, there, there's just a lot you're of, there's so a loyal. lot to handle. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And I'm very loyal, but there's also a lot to handle. Like, Social media adds a whole another element of trust, as we all know, you know, like Mm -hmm. they're just conversations to have. And I think the biggest thing for us was we were like, if this is something that you can't say to this person on DM or text that you couldn't say if I were sitting on your lap, probably not a good idea. And you Mm -hmm. probably stay away from that, you know. So it's communication and trust. And I think that's like the that is the cement of any relationship. Yep. I think bringing in anybody, whether that be a man or a woman into your relationship is just you should reevaluate your relationship. I mean, some people that works. It's risky. Yeah. I think it's that's a, that's a, another one of those like misconceptions. Like just because you're bi, that you just want to have threesomes all the time. Right. Yeah, and no. Like- <laughs> <laughs> that sounds been there, done that, and it gets messy. Yeah. And also, I think that a lot of times people think that when you say that you're bisexual and if you say you're a lesbian, women automatically think you're attracted to them. But if you're straight, (laughs) you're not attracted to every walking dude out there. Exactly. So chances are you're not my type. Right. You don't have to be weird. Guys get all weird around gay guys because they're like, oh, you want to fuck me, right? Oh, do you want to touch my butt? Like, no, you're not that attractive. Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. no. Um, I get so frustrated for you. (laughs) Thank you. And if you're frustrated and you need someone to talk to, uh, beautiful segue, I love it. If you're struggling through any of these issues, you can talk to a therapist a licensed therapist online. You don't have to go to an office. You can stay at home. You can go uh, through the Talkspace mobile therapy app. Um, If anything helps reduce stress and anxiety, it's talking things out. Talkspace has thousands of licensed therapists trained in over 40 specialties so that you can find one that deals with your specific issues. So anxiety, depression, relationship issues, and more. If you have something specific you want to work on right now, they'll find someone right for you. So it's affordable. Talkspace is a fraction of the cost of in-person therapy because you know those appointments get get hella expensive. (laughs) (laughs) But with Talkspace, you can send unlimited limited messages to your therapist and they'll engage with you at least five days a week so you could just text them constantly you're just like hey i need help i need help right now is this okay am i normal for crying fifty thousand times a day and they <laughs> they respond to you that means you never have to wait to share what's on your mind uh it's also secure talkspace is secure and private it uses the latest encryption technology to store client information and the bottom line is we all need someone to talk to and talkspace wants to give the licensed support we deserve at a price we can afford as a listener of this podcast you can get a hundred dollars off your first month on Talkspace to match with your perfect therapist. Go to Talkspace.com or download the app. Make sure to use the code MOOD, M-O-O-D, to get $100 off your That's first huge. month. So many dollars. That's or as Gina would say, doll hairs. Like dollars. <laughs> show your support for the show. That's <laughs> MOOD. The code is MOOD and it's at Talkspace.com. That's right. Feel and your feelings and sweat your sweat. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> That's true. Tagline. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that tagline. And if, uh, you know, recently we have been having a lot of free time because, you know, we're in a pandemic. And I have been spending most of my free time. If it's not on one game, it's on Best Fiends because I am so obsessed with this mobile puzzle game. And I really love it because they have these, like, beautiful graphics and they also have these really cute characters and each character that you collect it has like a certain power and that power like helps you beat each level because you're trying to trying to beat the slugs 
by using your fiends and it's super cute. I really love it. And like I said, it's a puzzle game, so you kind of have to figure out how to beat it each level and they get it gets really addicting. Like I've literally been playing this game for years. And yeah, so Best Fiends has thousands of levels already with new levels, events and characters added every single month. So like for Valentine's Day or whatever, they have like a Valentine's Oh, that's theme. cute. It's super cute. So like they're constantly updating the app which keeps me personally entertained and I never get bored of this app. So it's hours of fun right at your fingertips and you can even play offline. So back when we used to travel, I used to always pull out this <laughs> back in the day. Back in the day, way back in the day when you we used to waste travel. all your data basically. Exactly. Yeah, so I love the fact that you can play offline. So with over 100 million downloads and tons of five-star reviews, Best Fiends is a must play. Download Best Fiends for free on the Apple App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R, Best Fiends. And think of me while you play. I do, actually. Yay. Every time I think of this app, I think of you. Yay! <laughs> By the way, I've been pointing my toes this whole episode, and I just realized that that is kind of like a mask that I'm wearing. Why? Because I walked outside. I was painting my toenails because, one, I didn't want you to see that my pedicure has gotten so wonky oh, during this pandemic. Oh, my toenails are really up right now. It's That's really why mine, gross. They're minor covered. Yeah. <laughs> I don't Same. even have Girl, polish on my toes. I have nasty man feet right now. This is a literal mask. <laughs> yeah. Same. Yeah, so I was like, I was painting my toenails, but then I had to go um, get Jess outside, and so I just walked outside barefoot, and so the bottom of my feet are so, so dirty. Have so I've been like feet. trying my Islander hardest feet. just to point my toes this whole episode. Dang, that's exhausting. That's, yeah, but I'm getting these shins worked yeah, out. Yeah, you're gonna have <laughs> calf <some> muscles <laughs> yoked shins. <laughs> In Texas, just this one. Yeah. In Texas, we call that H E B feet. Shout out to Texans that might be listening. H E B is a grocery store, and some yeah. people like to go to the grocery store barefoot, mm. so we call it H E B feet. Oh. In Hawaii, Sounds no like one ever wears shoes, and I love it. I feel at peace. There. Yeah, but it's so gross when I watch people go into the bathrooms and they don't. Oh That's yeah, true. the bathrooms. So so I did get hookworm from <laughs> being barefoot in Mexico. Oh yeah, but that wasn't yeah. a bathroom. It wasn't. It yeah. was just everywhere. It was you were barefoot everywhere? Yeah, on the beach. Nice. And stuff. How did you? How come I don't you were know. the one that got it. No one else <laughs> got it. I don't know. It's <laughs> just your luck. It really is. It was, and then yeah, then we went to Costa Rica and Steve got a kidney stone and like just, just a, those vacations were just cursed. A lot of bad luck. Anyway, um, <laughs> pre COVID, <laughs> back to us uh, and and just wearing masks and in to the society. What am I trying to say? Society. Um, I feel like timelines, especially for women, mm-hmm. timelines are something that almost every woman feels like Entirely. they have to uphold a certain. Like there's this should happen by this time and my eggs are dying and biologically I have to blah, blah, blah. And career. To <laughs> too many windows and stuff. Yeah. So how has that played a lot. I mean, your timeline. You know, you had a kid, uh, a kid really young. The timeline was all backwards. thrown off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like you Benjamin, Benjamin buttoning <laughs> life right now. Okay, so now I'm living the life, and I'm in my teenage years. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> that's so cool. I actually did it right. So <laughs> right, I'm kind of jealous. I'm like low grown ass kid. I'm like I wish I had my kid all grown up and like relatable to me <laughs> already. And it is pretty yet. awesome. I know. I don't want a baby now. I'm like yeah. I'm too old. I feel like I'd be you, tired. Can you give me a 22 year old instead? <laughs> exactly. Dude, I don't know I how I have energy because then like. Like Casey and, and like you know we want to have more kids and I'm like yeah for you two <laughs> did, like you know now you're married um, in a new relationship well not new anymore but like yeah. you know not to Isaac's dad mm-hmm. is and when you were with Joe was there pressure to be like well now new marriage new babies yeah well I definitely yeah. feel that with with the one I'm in currently for sure he is definitely, it pressure or just something you want because you're it's both yeah it is both like I really do I do want more kids so that is cemented there like I do want more kids that's put that aside yes there's pressure because he doesn't have his biological kid right yeah. he wants to know what that's like and now see. you guys are in your 30s yeah. and so it feels like there's this window for me it's the window thing because yeah. it's like yeah I'm married and yeah Steve and I both really want to have kids but if I had to choose would I have him right now I don't know like because I, I kind of feel like the pressure plays a huge role in that well in a few years will I even have the choice mm. you know yeah. like or will the eggs be like peace out we're done like, so. <laughs> you only have like three left so figure yeah. it out <laughs> dude and oh, then now like peace. you know we've been kind of trying and stuff and then I end up feeling bad I'm like am I broken how come we're not pregnant yet true I mean also we haven't been like fully like 
trying. super, super trying. Like, oh my God, it's the whole week that we're fertile. Let's have sex every single day. We're not doing that either. Like crazy, crazy. Yeah. We're just being really relaxed with it. We're like, oh, we just so happen to have sex and I'm fertile. It's really whatever. not that easy to get pregnant. Like yeah. after you're like, I mean, I feel like from like 16 to like 22, you're probably like super, super fertile. fertile. But then after that, it, like it takes women a year, sometimes See, that's, two years. That's the part that like I, I, I forget to be kind with myself yeah. for that because I forget that and since I forget that I end up being really hard on myself also like, takes two to tango maybe it's yeah. his sperm being lazy you know you don't know <laughs> yeah. but we slow I feel swimmers. like we do take all <laughs> yeah, the responsibility slow swimmers. they're just like chilling and you're <laughs> like dive let's go get there. Yeah. <laughs> that's true <laughs> you know yeah but then like yeah and then thinking about starting over though like just that thought alone daunting it is daunting because I'm like oh my god Isaac's already 12 he's like my little best friend he does everything like he's just so independent like it's fucking easy right now. Like to He'll be the greatest over. little helper. Screaming babies. Yeah. Also, I don't know if this is the case for you, but I remember you talking about with Corinne, like, what if I don't have another angel child? That's me. Awesome I say that all kid. the time too. If I have the I'm spawn so of the devil and like I don't have the patience for the spawn of the devil. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> I barely had the patience for the, for angel, the angel of heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Just literally so, my f- biggest fear of like the next kids if we ever do get pregnant. I'm so terrified of how those kids are gonna come out. <laughs> Cause I'm like, I love like, it. You could have just stopped where you were. I know. Now there's a direct comparison. Yes. Before it was like maybe all kids are like this, but now if the kid Dude, is a little angel baby different yeah, personality I know. there's a lot of pressure because there's also I think infertility is an, another conversation a lot of people don't have and I think the statistic is correct me if I'm wrong but it's like one in eight couples have wow. like really end up having to go through IVF and um, and take that route seems high. that's a lot that's a lot yeah. that's a lot like a we lot. we forget and then you know what I'm reminded of that is like during holidays like Mother's Day and Father's Day that there's we have to honor like all the people who, you know, some people have angel babies and some people yeah. have babies who are, they're carrying them. And um, he, this time in COVID makes pregnancy so much more crazy. Oh, yeah. I can't even imagine. So scary. Yeah, actually, they're yeah. delivering alone. Yeah, it's so sad. I Well, I mean, the good news though is that I do have friends that they just recently announced that they had gotten pregnant. They've been trying for, I think, over 10 years. And they've gone through so many obstacles no. it's crazy i actually kind of want to have her on and we could talk to her about yeah. her journey too but yeah i mean it's so crazy especially right now during this time to like ooh, it's that's crazy. why the pressure sucks and people shouldn't necessarily go into a conversation with your friends asking like so when are you gonna have a baby because you don't even know that maybe they've been trying for yeah. many years and you're just that's the one thing that people need to bad. absolutely stop doing is, please yeah. when are you gonna have a baby yeah, when are you stop. gonna have a baby when are you gonna when, get married never fucking say that if anymore just, like miraculously be like Boom, then it would happen already. You carry the baby. Yeah. <laughs> you want the baby true. so badly, you carry the baby. Dude, that was when actually, are you having a baby? Yeah. No, that was actually. Mom. <laughs> yeah, mom. Come on, when are you having a baby? <laughs> Dude, I get it though, because I've been that person for a long time. Like like with Bart and Gio, I was like the one, I gave them their first baby present right after their wedding, and yeah, they didn't like have a kid to like about years that. later. Yeah. I was that person for sure. I was just like, I'm so excited, and I see you guys, and I just, I would love to see like, you know, you guys create a human because I know that that's something that they also wanted. So, yeah, I think there has to be like that, like read the room kind of vibe. Of yes. Like, wait, are they even have they expressed the fact that they're even trying or whatever? We naturally want there to be life created out of love. But a lot of times some people don't want to ever be parents. That's you know? me. I think I this year finally I was able to say because I was pushing it. I was pushing my my relationship with my Joe. I know it's weird because there's two Jess Jess and Joe. Joe. Two Jesses and two Joes. So we were pushing uh, our relationship into marriage and I was pushing. I was like, I'm fucking getting old, you know? Like, I don't have much time yet and if we're not going to do it, I need to hurry up so I can find the next person so I can get the baby from that man, (laughs) you know? And then so finally we broke up within uh, almost a year has gone by and now I'm like, you know what? I actually don't want to have kids and I've been following some other influencers. Like, I think, I forget her name, Lisa something, Tom Billy's wife. He's some other influencers or whatever, but she's, doesn't have a child and she doesn't want to have children and she's so she's kind of a voice for other women who don't want to have children as well it's totally okay yeah it's like is there is there something wrong with that you like what that people, means jess what you're gonna be the first pregnant no i'm not i'm not <laughs> so we're trying and i watch my fertility cycle and i'm like no dicks go inside <laughs> during this week <laughs> this is my no dick week yes <laughs> You yeah. just like intentionally don't shave, just yeah, like, just to prevent That's... yourself. <laughs> don't still that crazy. Still it's only it. a week. I know the window is weak. Well, and like the like yeah. the egg is only there for twenty four hours. Yeah. So you don't even like you don't even know. Yeah. And we're born with the eggs that yeah. we're gonna have forever. forever. We can yeah. reproduce sperm until they're ninety eight. And we're meanwhile we're like, was I born with five eggs or fifty? Yeah, who knows? 
Yeah. And then the other thing is, um, I feel like the reason there's all this pressure, like later, like where we're in our 30s and being like, oh, no, there's this window now is because there was already that pressure of like career and having to discover mm -hmm. like, who are you as a person and the career and women have like are they have to have like a career, too, you know, especially in this day and age where passions, yeah. it's hard to even afford to live without having both yeah the pressure on a people. man to be able to provide for two people is already so great yeah mm -hmm. and then now so it's like we have to pick up the slack too but then now we have to do that and be a mom and do all this other shit it's like well, and not be tired and yeah. not be tired and, and be look hot. refreshed yeah, yeah. Yep. and never <laughs> lose your temper be sexy yeah. Don't, yeah. Don't, yeah you can't yeah. lose your cool ever yeah yeah, yeah. oh man it's hard it's in a reality, lot we just man. walk around losing our shit all day long yeah. Yeah. you know what i mean yeah. i'm just popping off all day long yeah. <laughs> i talk about how i melt into the floor all the time like i just cry until i melt into a puddle on the floor and it could be any floor really like sometimes <laughs> Steve the walks kitchen in the floor, kitchen yeah. yeah I'll be on the fucking it tile in the kitchen <laughs> you know yeah. what any floor I can melt into any floor you're pretty so. good at that I think that's why I say like in the fitness industry when I say that it's sadness is viewed as weakness it's not because that's what it's like it's because when you hire someone to be your coach you expect them to be strong all the time right mm -hmm. and that's such a high expectation because they're just humans yeah mm -hmm. just like moms mm -hmm. we're expected to be strong all the time and it's like what if the weight of the world just feels heavy and it's i just, just need to put my arms heavy. down can i just take a break can i just Please? have a break can i just sit in the bath <laughs> yeah. without fingers going underneath like what yes. are you doing <laughs> what do you think i'm doing in here i'm on the toilet you feel like really like, i'm reading a book like a cat but they're baby yeah, they're just like, <laughs> i do get the cat ball let me in <laughs> That oh would be God. a funny video, like yeah. so funny. like yeah. reality versus expectation. Yeah. Expectation You're just like is crying and yeah. eating cookies in the tub alone. And a baby like trying to fucking <laughs> yeah. get in. You're like, I, I just need one more bite. Yeah, yeah. it's so true though, because I just remember being a kid and my mom had to have all the answers like constantly, all the and time. I was one of those kids that asked all the questions. Yeah, you the like, like super annoying. Well, why? <laughs> but like, but then why? Like, well, then why does the tree grow like that? But then why? And then, <laughs> and then they just say because I said so. Yeah, and I'm like that's. It's not no. science. <laughs> yeah. That's why it's good to give Isaac exactly. an explanation. I try. Yeah. It's hard. They want to know specifically why. You know why? The, I think for me was because I didn't, I had the complete opposite growing up. Like I had a very absent mom and I was just like, well, that's what I know. Okay. Let's not repeat that cycle. Yeah. <laughs> Fully. Cause I actually do find myself falling into my mom's habits sometimes, especially like, you know, during these times I'm like addicted to a video game and I'm just like, Okay, and I, I sometimes I feel Isaac, he, he'll come because he's bored with his video games too, or and he'll be like, let's go ride a bike. And I'm like, I have to make that conscious effort to be like, yes, put this shit away. This is not important. Let me go spend time with Quality my son. Time. It's like, oh, because, oh my God, it gets me so sad when I realize like, you were four years old like yesterday. What the fuck happened? Yeah. Where yeah. has the time gone? And then next, next thing I know, I realize I'm really taking every moment for granted. And then, like, not until I look back and I see, like, his baby pic, even from, like, a year ago photos. I'm like, oh, my God, you're never going to be like this again. Oh, shit, I got to appreciate you Aww. right now. I got to focus. I'm just going to stare at you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's well, what I did. <laughs> I did when he was born for, like, the first two weeks of his life. I, I could not take my eyes off of him. Yeah. I was just so obsessed. I'm we can like, just stare at babies all day long, yeah, right? Dude. Like just them breathing and cooing. You're just like, wow, this is a magical creature. Seriously. I built it. <laughs> I stare at other people's babies because I don't have my own. So I just stare. <laughs> and they stare back and they're like, you know, you want one. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I know, baby, I'm going to have like, one. like, rub off on me with your little baby energy. <laughs> yeah. Give me that baby foot. Oh, uh, baby feet. Baby collagen. Ugh. I definitely do get the baby yeah, craze right? crazy thing like especially cute aggression yeah, yeah especially like when Steve cleans the house or like he's like doing something really like, like oh you'd be such a like good fatherly dad. yeah I'm like a baby in me he like our little nephew he like plays with him and I'm like oh my god my ovaries are bursting they're just like <laughs> need it exploding. I need some green babies in there <laughs> It's like oh, shotgunning yes. eggs into your fallopian tube. Yes. Like, fuck like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ow, I feel it. I feel it. <laughs> hey, okay. I hear you. Yeah. Yeah, man. Like, it's hard. How do you, how do you fucking balance things ever? Like, how do you just be a person? Being Sometimes I see hard. people being a people and I'm like, how are you even a <laughs> How are you <laughs> being a people? <laughs> how did you do that? <laughs> how did you go through your day? I think, I honestly think no one knows what they're doing. No. I think yeah. everyone's just figuring it out and doing the best they can there's doing their delusion. best impression of people yeah. it's all a mask yeah there's some yeah. delusional people that really believe they have it figured out i know yeah. but i'm like okay that's honey. why i also don't get the people that um 
like if if they disagree, they just they can't just be like, well, maybe neither of us. Know. Yeah. Like when it comes to just things that aren't proven yet or like beliefs mm-hmm. or theories on life and stuff, they can't just be like, huh, that's your opinion. This is my opinion. We neither of us really know the hard truth. Yeah. They have to be like, that's wrong. I'm wrong. No, you're wrong. Their mm-hmm. entire identity is attached to that opinion. Yeah. And so if mm-hmm. you're saying that their opinion is wrong, it's like their whole you're being is their identity. Exactly. That's so the true. whole lifetime built on this one idea. Yeah. Exactly. Ooh. Ooh, that's heavy. I just find that so fascinating. I'm like, wow, what's it like to just know? Like, you think, like, to just be so hard grained. Like, I, I remember feeling like no, that. Really? I, re- I literally remember having this thought when I was, <laughs> when I was 15, and I was partying a lot, and I was doing drugs and shit. But I remember having this thought of like, you know what? I know everything. Like, I literally fucking know everything. Like. I can't learn anything new because I know everything. Like I was a phase. <laughs> I feel like it's a phase because I feel like I was that too. Like, I hope yeah. you were high during it. I think <laughs> I was. I really think I was. <laughs> but yeah, it's just so silly to think like, really, you don't know shit. Like no one knows shit. The like, older people that's ninety get, years old don't know shit. The older you get, I think, the more you realize you don't know. Yeah. But uh, yeah, uh, wow, this hour flew by. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for Jess. having me. Yeah, Is there so any? Much, if there was Jess. one piece of advice you could give the people out there that might be struggling like with their with masks their masks that they're having gl- super glue on yeah <laughs> what would would you tell them i would say that it doesn't get easier until you actually live your truth and once you can stop thinking about what everybody else is thinking about you it's just easier to take it down you know take that mask off and to just if you're happy be happy and if you're sad be sad but like living your life and living your truth is more important to me than anything because that's mental health and I think I mean that's a whole other conversation but yes that's mental your health in it <laughs> mental health live your it. best life <laughs> it's much more relaxing to just let go of what anybody else thinks or cares of yeah right. you know? but it and just the, do you the, I think the anticipation of it is harder than the it actual is. thing it it's is. like but then they're gonna all the judge scary me part, they're all yeah. gonna laugh at me dude that's so true because even just superficially like with makeup I remember there was a time where I, I really could not step outside and be like have any other human see me without like concealer that's true under eyes like under eye concealer and then as I'm putting the concealer on I like, well, might as well put the mascara and the next thing I know I have a whole, <laughs> face. Have a whole <laughs> face of makeup and then not until we all took a vacation in Hawaii like five years ago and I just spent the whole day without makeup and I'm like this is liberating oh shit because even then I was like, putting on like concealer oh, wow. it's so ridiculous too because other so people stupid. are like I don't give a fuck what's on yeah, your face. Yeah. Like, but you think that they're going to be looking at you like, ew. Everyone's yeah. more concerned with yeah. how people are viewing them yeah. than Everyone's in their looking own at you. Head. So yeah. true. It's We're all ridiculous. Yeah. We're, like if we can, I, well, it was like one of the four agreements, right? Like if we can just not take things personally, we'll just not be hurt ever. Yeah. 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 If you could just live in the present. Uh, Eckhart Tolle, you're so your feelings you sweat your sweat. <laughs> <laughs> that's her, that's the good tagline. Oh, um, like find that. Jess, please go follow her on yes. Instagram, uh, follow her blog. What's your blog so they know? Because Jess Ladam, I don't know my name, JessLazama.com. And I actually went in detail about divorce and what that means to move on. So yeah, if you're that struggling, post oh, I is hear you. really, really good. Read. I cried. I see you. And I wasn't even going through that, but I was just like, oh my God, this is so, I get everything going on there and I love it I was trying to avoid anything like that for the longest time but then I feel like now I'm ready to read something deep like that you should read it I'm gonna go I think later on tonight I'm gonna go progress Jess yeah so happy for you (laughs) yay Yay. breakthroughs yeah (laughs) well take your mask off have some fun live your life don't care about other people's opinions and we'll see you on the next one yeah Bye. bye bye